What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to be using one of my favorite, favorite rigs. It's called the float rig. It's very simple, but very effective rig. Aaron, you see, you see, I closed him. A float rig is a floating Carolina rig. I essentially tie a Carolina rig, right? And then I attach a float and this float can slide up and down. The only thing that stops it is this bead and this knot up here. You see, this knot can be moved depending on how deep you want your float to sit. This allows you to really fish really deep depths without having to have a really, really long leader line. This was a game changer for me. It's a really different kind of technique because instead of looking for a sensation of a pull, you're looking for it. You're watching your bobber go down and that to me is the most exciting part. Sometimes the bobber goes down so hard it pops and it's awesome. This is a very underrated rig and if you haven't tried it before, you've got to try it. Especially if you're fishing in places with snags, fishing in places with deep drop-offs, this is gonna be the perfect rig for you. Um, today, I'm gonna to be doing a little less talking and a little more fishing for you guys. So get ready. It's gonna be some bobber downs today. Today, I'm fishing an inshore creek in Jacksonville, Florida. And I'm using a float rig, which is a very successful, very popular rig to use here in Jacksonville, Florida. And it's very popular because there's a lot of oyster beds in and around the creeks. Oyster beds means snags. Snags means lost bait, lost sinkers, lost hooks. That's not good. Float rig keeps everything floating and presented naturally so you don't get snagged on the bottom. I'm hoping to catch some black drum, red drum, speckled trout, sheep's head. There's a lot of different kinds of fish here and I'm excited to get started. Here's the bait of choice today. Live shrimps. Now, you're looking for bait that's nice and sparky. Hook it right through. Don't touch the brain. And that's the way you want to hook it. Whoa, Jack! That's so random. That is random. Look at that Jack. So random. We hooked in, huh? Watch here. I'm going to pop the float. I'm gonna pop it and move my shrimp a little bit and watch what happens. And there it is. Bingo! This is a speckled trout, and this is what everyone likes to catch here, besides this and, and red drum, but the speckled trout is really where it's at here. 15 inches, that's a keeper, but it's, it's a little too close, so I'm going to try and keep between 16, 17, starting. All right, another shrimp, same method. Right in the craft, right here. And now uh, I have my depth set a little bit deeper than I usually do. This is probably four or five feet. From the yeah. swivel? So this, this sinker is dropping down five feet from where I pass. Hmm? Bless my rod for me. <laughs> Give it a good blessing. Good vibes, good vibes. Huh? She gave me good luck like that. Yeah. XD. XD is the 
Bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's probably a little red. Huh? Oh, it's another trout. <laughs> My lucky day. So if you notice, we're casting upstream and just letting this naturally drift through. This is the action that you want to see with your float. You want it to be moving so that it looks like it's naturally just coming by a fish right there. So we're casting upstream and just letting it drift down slowly. Once it gets to this point of the drift, I pretty much bring it back in and do the whole drift again. Because I know that there's, there's a lot of fish hitting in this area, not necessarily this area. So I just keep drifting this back and over and over again. But in some places you can let it go out so far, right? Yeah, but in some places I can just let it just keep drifting, 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 drifting. But the further out it gets, the harder it is to set it. Nothing. <laughs> that was all the way out there. Probably a red. Let's hope it's a trout. Oh, uh -oh. it's a red. I think that is it. That's in. There you go. Nice. Two at a time. I don't know. It could just be a red. But I hooked it and it just went straight up. Yeah. Oh, you got a trout! Woo! Here it comes, boy! Here it comes! There we go. Here it comes. Here it comes. Do it. Bless it. <laughs> Something popped at it like a second after you blessed it. So do it again. <laughs> I can only do it once. Do it one more time. Just try one. <laughs> Aaron, you see? You see? I closed him. <laughs> Now bless it so I don't lose it, Eric. Yeah, it's hanging down like that. Yep, red. There we go. That's a nice one, Aaron. Perfect hook set, look at that. And the secret was the blessing of Aaron. <laughs> Not the rig? Not the rig. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to measure it. You're right, Rod. Nine, well, no, 19 and a half. Yes. That one's for Grandma. Yeah, this one's going to be for Grandma. Let's do another shrimp. Hook it the same way, right here. Black drum size. 14? That's 14. Huh? If Louis really casts it, he owes me 12 shrimp. I'm not gonna say anything right now, but. Go ahead, Louis. Go cast that. All right, that's, you owe me a dozen shrimp, Louis. Of course I do. <laughs> I told you you're gonna cast it again. No. 
I've been using this float rig for about two years now and it's caught me countless fish. If you want to learn how to use it, I teach you how to tie it, what kind of, what kind of gear you need for it, and um, exactly how to put it together um, in our website, heyskipperfishing.com. There's also a great Florida playlist on our, on our channel. If you like this kind of fishing, check out that playlist because we've got a lot of this kind of fishing. Well, the conclusion of the day is that it's really fun to watch your bobber go down, whether you, there's a bunch of fish or not. We got a nice fish for dinner. I'm gonna cook that up. The float rig worked really well because sometimes they were biting across, sometimes they were biting in the middle, and being able to adjust that and naturally drift a live bait like that worked pretty well. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next week.